Welcome back to our Game of Active Directory lab. In this lab, we're learning paper teaming skills where we are learning how to exploit a Game of Active Directory environment, which is Active Directory, that is being monitored by Elastic Security. In this lab, we are learning the techniques that attackers use and also how detection works. As you can see on my screen here, I've been playing in this lab and I decided to share with you the fifth, sixth video in the series where we'll gain persistence on our machine. In the last video, we were able to follow step-by-step -step methodology on how to exploit a SQL server. You can see documentation on our GitHub page, and also you can watch a video about it, but we were able to exploit SQL injection, gain initial access on a server, and now we have a system beacon on the machine. The next step that attackers would probably want to do is to gain persistence on that system. And what is persistence? This is a way for us to gain access to this system. Let's say there is a system reboot or power outage or the user signs out. We don't want to re-exploit the SQL injection again. We want to probably make sure that the system gives us our shell back. And in our GitHub repo, I defined what persistence is and also where it falls in the kill chain, which is part of the post-exploitation phase. Today, we'll be using Sliver and we'll kick off our same binary that we have on disk. It's in C, Windows Tasks. If you don't have that binary, generate a C Sliver beacon or binary and upload it to disk. Unfortunately, we have to do something like that in this situation. There are other ways you can do it without uploading it. But in this case, we already dropped the binary to disk, so we're doing the same thing. Once we have a binary on disk, we need to use execute assembly. Again, this is not the most OPSEC safe thing to do. I will show you here in our logs what execute assembly looks like once it's ran. And that's the whole goal of this. We'll run these tools that we all know are documented. And how do we defend against them? And you'll see in a little bit. For us to gain persistence, we're going to create a scheduled task. And this scheduled task is going to be created using sharp persist. Sharp persist is a tool that you can find online on GitHub and other locations as well. But sharp persist allows us to create persistence using different ways like a scheduled task, like what we're doing today. There's a lot of options out there that you can use, but it allows us to run things in memory. While we will be running things in memory here, what you'll notice is that in our Elastic, the default sliver payload definitely gets picked up as memory patching. You can modify this so that it doesn't, but that's beyond the scope of this video. We just want to show you how we can do that. So with this background in mind, you are going to need Sharp Persist download it on your Kali, and you can grab it from this GitHub repo that I showed you. Uh, on the Mandiant Sharp Persist repo, you can compile it from, mem from scratch, or you can actually just download the pre-compiled one if you're lazy. Just don't do that in production. For a lab environment like this, I'm okay with that. Specifically for our scheduled task, we want it to be at logon, which is at system reboot or anything like that. So we say execute assembly, run sharp persist. My sharp persist is kept in my payload folder. They want to create a task, uh, schedule task. We will name this task backup task and it should kick off at logon. That's what this command is going to do. You can find these notes on our GitHub repo that will be uh, posted down there. Otherwise, let's go back to our beacon and run execute. Executor assembly. This is actually uh, in our session mode. You can also run the same uh, in beacon mode using execute assembly. But before I run it, let's just verify that in my payloads, I do have sharp assist.exe. You definitely need to download that. And I can, I'm not going to show you how to download this from the internet. You can simply do that yourself. Otherwise, let's run it. And once this completes, we will definitely check to make sure that the scheduled task was created here i define like the name is a uh, backup task and m ed is just the scheduled task to verify that it was created we use execute assembly and of course it says uh, success scheduled task was added and the command that the scheduled task will run when the machine reboots or it log on is c windows tasks backup.exe let's see how we can check to make sure that it's there. Execute assembly. Um, in this case, we want to run sharp persist. 
want to use a schedule task module that they have and we we'll just want to list there's a way you can filter through i don't know how so i'm just going to list all of them and then we'll scroll up and we'll check to see if our task with the name backup task is actually created it should be near the top this is all the tasks so let's scroll near the top all right so here's where we listed the task and as you can see backup task was added and what is the information about it it said log on backup.exe will definitely run then but of course we're not going to wait until it does that so we're going to restart this machine and see if it actually comes back up so right now if i say sessions i have um this session that i'm in right now beacons i also have this one beacon that i have i'm going to kill this beacon trusting that my schedule task will kick off if it kicks off i should definitely be able to see it and we can restart this machine i i'm just going to go to my um proxmox here this is the web machine that i'm in i can just restart it using the console as if i was a normal user who was signed in so I just restart it and it's restarting in proxmox while we ran execute assembly and created a schedule task there should be events windows events that were generated for example there should be a service schedule task creation event in uh sysmon that would have been created so these are the rules that we have let me move myself out of here and we have a, a lot of alerts for example this one here we executed notepad.exe this is from us interacting with execute assembly specifically this one here amsi or wc patch is and it says here generates a detection alert each time elastic endpoint alert is uh, created i know this this bypass here identifies attempt to modify the permissions or write to the microsoft anti-malware scan or msi so us running execute assembly from our beacon did this generated this alert let's go back since we restarted our machine let's check our beacons okay of course the beacon is dead now and our sessions our session is also dead so what we can do is uh sessions prune and if i say sessions now the session is gone beacons beacons uh this beacon is dead so say beacons prune the prune commands will, will just uh, remove the, the beacons. So I'll specify dash D for the duration. Maybe I'll just say two minutes so that I can prune that one. Otherwise, beacons will only be pruned after the default one hour time. Okay, so sessions, we don't have any sessions. Beacons, we don't have any beacons. Let's check to see if our machine restarted. Yes, it did restart. So we need to wait to see if we get a beacon from that restart it should take a few seconds or maybe a minute or so but that schedule task should definitely kick off okay actually it just did i was going to pause for a second but here we've got a new beacon if i say use 25 that's the beacon that we have and then um i can also get, get into interactive mode if this was my goal to do so so as you can see our persistence worked we definitely got caught here. We generated a ridiculous number of uh, alerts. If, since we now have persistence, we don't have to ever worry about uh, connections to this machine. We'll always connect to it. Next, we need to dump a bunch of password hashes, maybe get some active directory information there since we are now system, um, run Bloodhound and all other tools in the next future. So in the next videos, that's what we'll be doing. Otherwise, this was a fun machine. As you can see, we are making a lot of progress. We are learning a lot. And I hope you also check out the github repo with all these steps if you want to follow along and also other videos that show you how to set this up otherwise thank you for watching and i hope to see you next time